I think we're live. I see a sign that we're live. So if we are live, welcome everybody. <laughs> I just see meeting is now live streaming on Facebook. So I'm going to start talking just in case we are, because last time I didn't start talking and we were. <laughs> so welcome everybody. The world is a lot right now. Are you feeling it? We all need new tools to help us walk through the chaos with grace, ease, and compassion for each other and for ourselves. In this podcast, you'll hear from parents, educators, and other experts who can bring perspective to the monumental job of parenting. It's time to level up and be warriors for our kids and our communities. This is the Warrior Parent Podcast. I'm Marcy Mitchell. And I'm Debbie DeMano. As parents, we understand that it really does take a village to raise our kids. We hope that this podcast serves to create and support that community for you. Join us as we discuss and practice our core tools, which are proven mind-body techniques that can be used by anyone to improve your life on a daily basis. My name is Marcy Mitchell. I am here with my partner, Debbie DeMano, as the Warrior Parent Podcast goes live for the first time in our over a year of recording this podcast. And so I'm so grateful that you're here watching us. And I sure hope you're going to join in our conversation today as we address women's equity. And that is something that we have uh, designated as our August theme, women's equity. And so we've been talking to people about it already, and we had this wonderful idea from our, our new marketing director, Laura, that we would go live and record an episode live and let you all come in and share your comments, share your questions. And so that's what we're doing right now. So um, if you didn't know and you just happened to see this and you're jumping on, stick around, ask your questions, share your comments about what's going on in the world today and um, particularly around this issue of women's equity. I do have a little bit of housekeeping that I want to just get past right now. So um, this is not a place for trolls, no hate speech. <laughs> no uh no name calling we are very interested in your perspectives in your questions in a real conversation um even if you disagree with us that's okay disagreeing is okay um hate speech uh, name calling that's not okay and you will be deleted from the conversation so um don't go there and um and we're going to just talk for about a half an hour. If we get if we get lots going on, we will we will stay on and we'll make it a two episode podcast because we would we're just dying to talk to y'all. This is why we started this podcast was to create community and discussion. And so right now I'm going to turn it over to my partner in crime, Debbie Demano, and she's going to talk a little bit about the topic we have chosen for this month. So take it, Debbie. Okay. All right. So I have to be straight up honest. I did not know about this amazing day, <laughs> International Women's Day uh, for Equality. And um, I'm feeling a little silly about that. <laughs> I'm 60 years old and I didn't, I didn't know this thing has been around. So, uh, so anyway, we are super excited and we're super excited to have this discussion, especially in lieu of what is going on on the planet right now, right? So the idea is to honor and draw attention um, to the struggles that women have had um, for equality in society, not only in America, but this, but in the world, right? So, um, you know, we we want to make sure that um, that women's rights are not left behind. Right. I think that's 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 the big piece right now. So um, so there was, you know, a lot that's that's happened over the last, you know, hundreds of years historically. Um, and, you know, the night gave um, women the right to vote. That was a really big deal. And then this Women's Equality Day, I want to get it right, was um, August 27th, or excuse me, August 26th, 1973, by Bella Obsbug. Ob Obsug. I want to say that right. Um, she was a Democrat from New York. Women's, uh, Marcy said she was a women's rights uh, Yes like a leader of the women's rights. So Huge leader, she was right up there with uh, Gloria Steinem and all the women who were out there 
when a woman couldn't have a credit card and a woman, you know, that we had very few rights back then. And um, yeah. so these are the women that we can thank for, for what we do have now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're celebrating um, social, economic, cultural, political achievements of women right now. And be straight up, we're going to have some, a little bit of politics today. <laughs> we really try to stay away from it, but but I think we can't right now because this is an important time on the planet and in the world for women. And so we're, we're going to honor uh, where we're at and the discussions that are going on right now. So, uh, so that being said, um, we want to talk a little bit also last week, we had a beautiful conversation with um, our good friend, Rev Sherry, and we talked about uh, the divine feminine energy and what that was. Um, and for those of you who, who were not here, go back and listen to that one. Um, and hopefully Rev Sherry is going to hop on and talk with us today. But uh, we talked about um, the feminine energy and what that is. And it, it is it is intuition. It is nurturing. It is reception, receptivity to family and children, to the world, to the planet. Um, it's empathy, right? Yes. And, uh, and I think the biggest thing is collaboration. Like women are really good. <laughs> about collaborating we like to talk and, and we're doing a podcast and uh, men may not be as as uh as much collaborative collaborators as as i think women are and a lot of times they'll get after us because we're talking too much but <laughs> yeah and, and that right. comes from this these old paradigms these old ideas of what it means to be a man and this this old paradigm of of what I call a toxic masculinity. When I say toxic masculinity, that doesn't mean that I believe that men are toxic. I mean, this idea that, um, and it's, it goes right in line with patriarchy, right? So this idea that the man must be in control, he must be, it must be a power over situation where, where he's coming from above and saying, you do that, you do that. If, if you, this idea that if you receive guidance or you, or you listen to other people that you've, that you're not, you're not manly, you're not powerful versus what Debbie's talking about with this collaborative one where it's like, okay, let's all, let's all have a conversation. What, what can other people bring? We've got a room full of people. Um, what, what does everyone else have to say? Because anyone who's done that, who's opened that knows that there's tons of wisdom out there for other people to bring. And the idea that the leader has to know everything and has to um, just tell people what to do is an old paradigm. It's an old idea. When you when you get collaborative, when you listen to what other people say, um, when you allow emotion to come into the room, when you allow empathy to come into the room, then you get very different results. If you're if going to empathy, if you're thinking about how does this affect other people, how how is what I'm saying or what we're proposing going to affect people who are unhoused, people who can't afford to buy these certain things that we're saying they're needing, people from a whole different community from the one represented at this table right now. If you don't if you don't do that, then you're just cutting out big parts of of the community, of the world. And and we really are all connected. We do better when we all do better. And that's yeah. something that's been missing in this more patriarchal society that yes. I think the women's, this feminine energy brings. And it's important. And I, and I, I want to bring, you know, a disclaimer to this because of course it is women's day, but I, I don't want to be dissing our men out there. Right. And last week we, we did talk about um, men and the new, um, the new feminine energy um, of men right now. They're, they're also being called to have some emotional intelligence, right? To, to have some compassion, to have some empathy, vulnerability, like nothing sexier than, <laughs> than a vulnerable man, right? Um, yes. And so that's not to say that they're not ambitious and courage and strong, uh, courageous and strong, all those things, right? But we also are asking that that divine um, feminine energy um, f now throw flow through the men in our lives as well, right? It's super important. Yeah, 
Right. Yeah. Because we are all, we all have both masculine and feminine energy. And yes. so, you know, the masculine energy is more that doing and um, striving and caring, and that's important. And the feminine is checking in and making sure that, that people are seen and heard and that, and that people get to deal with what's going on inside. Cause that's really important. And going back to what Debbie said about, you know, it is not, a, it's not shit on man day. That is, that is not what this is about at all. What I've said before, and we both said before, is that a great um, disjustice, injustice has been done to men by putting this false paradigm of the toxic masculinity on them and saying, you can't cry. You can't talk about what you feel. You better show up as the boss. You better never um, ask questions. You better just be telling like all of that. Don't don't hug. Don't don't kiss your son. Don't, you know be a man, all, all of this bullshit that's associated with this is doing this huge disservice to men, boys, and has been for a long time. And, you know, suicide rates among men are huge right now. And it, I, I do believe, and I, it's not based on scientific data that I have here, but when you see this, um, what's going on in the world right now, and it is, it is the, the, I believe the, um, the dying of old paradigms, including patriarchy, which is not working. Patriarchy is not working. We've got we've got wars and we've got people unhoused in the streets and we've got um, a very divided nation and all of this um, animosity. That is not a healthy society. How many people do have we put in prisons in America? The numbers are astronomical. Yeah. And 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 part of that is because we're people are profiting off of human beings being placed in prisons, which is not not okay. That's not, that's not a, um, feminine ideal. That's a, a old school masculine capitalism idea that needs to go. Mm -hmm. So, um, so things have not been serving and now we need to, we need to release these old ideas. We need to allow men to be part of this more holistic, more balanced way of being. And it's going to be, it's going to be so much better for men too. Um, like oh, what I was saying about the I got got off on a soapbox. Got <laughs> <laughs> like, a reeler yeah. in. Yeah, get a reeler like in. So <laughs> men are not happy, and they're so they're in this space where like lots is going on, but they're seeing women getting more educated, stepping into these positions, and they've been told that's a threat, and they're losing this this fake persona that they've created. They don't know what to do, and that is I believe that is leading to more suicides. What if that wasn't a threat. What if that was like, I'm going to take some of this too. You don't have to carry it all. And guess what? You get to cry and you get to, you get to take the kids to the park and just be with them and play and, and have fun. And, and, and you can share with your partner or with someone else when you're really struggling, you don't have to just be like, there's nothing I can do, but this, this yeah. very permanent, um, painful act of of just knowing that you don't belong we want men to belong but we want we want this more balanced humanity that's what the planet needs the gender equality is everyone's responsibility right just because we're women and having this discussion <laughs> with some other women doesn't mean it's all about the women right um last night i was i was watching um the uh Democratic um, convention and there was a woman up there um, and she was with her husband and she was talking about the situation that she got in where she needed to have an abortion and she nearly died. Mm. Her husband was there standing there nearly in tears having this discussion about he almost saw his wife die because no one would take care of her. Right. And so again, to back to the point that this is, this is everyone's problem right now. This you know, this this is all part of um, all of what needs to be healed right now. It's all percolating. It's all showing up because there's so much work to be done around this on the planet and yes, and for the universe essentially, right? So yeah, yeah, and and I think we're going to go more into that. But I we had asked people if they had questions or comments to share them ahead of time. And I know some things came in. So I'm just going to reach out to Laura, who's our marketing director, and she's helping manage um, this live stream, as is our administrative um, 
person, which is Justin. So they're both on, you don't see them, but they're behind the scenes making this work. But Laura, tell me what, what questions do you have? Is there something that we can address um, at this point? Uh, absolutely. Thank you for uh, having me here with you guys. And um, I do have a couple questions that were previously submitted. Uh, uh, one from Patrick Mitchell and another one from Shawnee McGovney. And anybody else who's watching, please submit us some questions or join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you uh, and build this beautiful community. So let's go into Patrick Mitchell's question. He asked, what are some ways that men can better support the women in their lives, especially with the looming threats to the quality of life in the co current political climate? Thank you, Laura. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and full disclosure, Patrick Mitchell is my son who I adore and am very proud of. And uh, and Shoni is my daughter-in-law. So I'm thrilled to have questions from both of them. But I love Patrick asking that question because um, this is exactly what we're talking about. Let's let's let men be vulnerable and ask this question and then and then take the steps to how do they show up. So um, do you want to start with that, Deb? What, do you, what would you share about that? Um, you know, I, I can only give that from my perspective um, in my relationship with, with my current husband. You know, I, I wasn't always in relationships like this where someone was so supportive of of me and my health and my spirituality and really asking like what do you want to do in this world right and i think it's 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 men being able to first of all you know honor women honor uh your spouse honor your children honor um and and just simply ask questions about what they need um and because then you're going to support them to show up in the world as they want to show up in the world not the way they thought they should show up or the way their parents told them they should be or whatever right yeah. it, it it creates this really beautiful interactive um situation or relationship and it it creates a a powerful group of people. My my kids would would call us the power couple. I think right yeah. because we're you know he's as supportive of me as I as as I am of him, and and I think it starts. I kind of, I think it starts there. It's it sounds kind of simple, but I I think that's yeah. sort of the basis for a lot of what's going on right now. We're not taking the time to stop and listen. Yeah, and you say it's simple, and many things are simple, and yet that doesn't mean they're easy. And so, yeah, so what you're saying, listen, communicate, so important. Um, a one thing that may seem obvious, but vote and vote for people who are upholding the um, the the humanity of of the women in your life, of all the people in your life. You know, this is something that as a as a mother of a transgender male son, I often, will look at, you know, our people in my life and in people in my son's life, I think, how do they vote for candidates who would deny the humanity of someone that they love, someone in their family? And honestly, you shouldn't have to have a transgender person or a woman or a girl in your life to vote for their humanity. So vote for people who are not going to tell them that, that they don't have no autonomy over their own bodies. Vote for people that will not say, you know, you don't, I don't value you. You don't get to choose who you are. You don't get to, um, to choose your name or your pronouns. Like that's, that's not for you to do. Like who does that? Who says that that's not your own decision, that we're going to decide that, that we're going to legislate that your parents of, of kids can't help them. Um, have the gender affirming care that they need. And, you know, the people will try to, people who are against like transgender rights will try to say, oh, you know, you got five-year-olds who are having reassignment surgery. That is not happening. Or, oh, you've got, you've got women 
having abortions a week before the baby's due or minutes before the baby's due. That is not happening. That's a false flag. That's a lie. That is something that people say to, to get emotions up. The people who, who get to, um, you know, second and third trimester and need an abortion are devastated by that choice, yeah. but it's still their body. It's their personal choice. So it may mean that like the woman last night, that, that she's going to die, that her, that her health is in jeopardy. If this pregnancy isn't terminated, it can mean that the baby's already dead and needs to be removed. It can mean, you know, all sorts of things that are incredibly difficult for a, a woman and a family for, for a family to deal with. And that somehow politicians are thinking, here's where I belong. I should get right in here and I should tell them what's right. Rather than this family and their doctor deciding what's going to work for them. This isn't, yeah. this isn't people just like, woohoo, I'm going to get yeah. some abortions. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's all just a lie. And yeah. the same thing with, with the transgender kids, it's things like maybe some, maybe some, um, hormone blockers, puberty blockers, so that they have a little more time before they start, before a, a, a transgender boy starts growing breasts, which at a time that's already so difficult, give them a little bit of time, support them, let them, let them tell you who they are, let them use the name and the gender that they are and, and at the school as well. So, yeah. um, did, Laura, so, did we answer the question? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm up, again, I'm up on my soapbox. So voting for sure, asking. And you know, one more thing about that one from Patrick is it very natural for men to try to um, solve everything for women. And this is something we talk about so often because I know all of my married women friends have this where they express something that's going on that they're struggling with and their husband's right there and he's going to try to start solving it. Yes. Normalize asking like, what, what do you need from me right now? And this could be, you know, this could be um, same sex couples. This could be anyone in relationship. Normalize saying, you know, someone shared something with you. What do you, what do you need right from me right now? Are you looking for some suggestions? Do you just need to be heard? Um, how, how can I show up and support you? Just asking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we kind of, uh, we're going to have more discussion on that other subject in a minute, but Laura, I think you had another question, right? Yes. I have one more question, uh, from Shawnee McGovney. Um, she wanted to ask us what would be some advice that you would give to a young woman who's interested in entering the military? Yes. And oh, wait. <laughs> it's going to have to be a Marcy question because I I don't know the first thing about being in the military, but but Marcy has been in service for our country, so I'm going to let her manage that one. Yeah, and you know what? I love that question because one when it when I read it and saw it, what it came to my mind was oh, when I decided to join the military, and it was a very it was out of the blue. It was not something that I was like oh can't wait till I graduate from college. I'm going to join the military was not on my radar at all, not on my bingo card. Nobody would have guessed that. <laughs> but when I did it and it and then it was for me, it was about paying for my college because the scholarships are very, very good. And so I my my college got paid for, I got my books got paid for, I got a stipend. And um so that was excellent. But it was one of the most empowering things I ever did as a young woman because I had to go to this basic um training situation for six weeks at Fort Knox, Kentucky, which is a very hot and humid place if you've never been there. And when you go in and I was, I was going in as a possible cadet, um, it's a culture shock. People are going to start yelling at you the minute you get on the bus. And then that is the truth. You're at the airport, they find you, you get on the bus and people start yelling and telling yeah. you how to address them and Sergeant this and sir and ma'am and all of these things, which as a SoCal kid, I was not used to, I didn't know. So at first it was like, oh shit, what have I done? But then you're doing these really, sometimes really hard physical things, pushing yourself, very little sleep, um, marching all day, running, it's hot and humid. You're uncomfortable. You don't get any time to yourself. You're rappelling down the side of a tower. You are um, breathing. You're walking into a room filled with um, with gas, basically the same gas they throw at protesters. And you're told to just suck that in. And let me tell you, that is awful. Your eyes water, your nose water. You can't breathe. <laughs> but, you know, so they do all these really hard things, but you get through it. And you every day you're like, wow, 
look what I did. And I came out of that like a, a whole different person. So I'm not saying everyone should join the military, but I am saying as a woman, it was very empowering. And in the army, and I can't speak always to the other services, but in the army, there was, um, there was a lot of equity when I was in and keep in mind, this was the late eighties and the early nineties, but I, I, I had pay equity. When I was when I I graduated, I was commissioned as a second lieutenant. I made the same thing as the male second lieutenants, and I mm -hmm. progressed through the ranks in a very systematic way. And I'm not saying there wasn't sexism, sexism because there was. There plenty. There was plenty, but there was a lot of the military can often be a um, a social justice equalizer, like they get mm -hmm. out ahead of others. So I did have that pay equity. And um, yeah, so for me, it was um, it was a great way to get my education um, for anyone going into the military, really read the contracts, make sure you understand what you're signing, but it can be, you're going to get a lot of education. You're going to get opportunities to lead and to, um, and to do things that are scary and difficult and um, make sure you understand what you're doing, but it, it could be something very empowering. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I also don't want this to be a severely negative discussion because I think as women, we have come so far, right? We, we've we come such a long way. And I can give you an example of this from when I was growing up. So I grew up, you know, I'm 60. So in the 80s, I'm, I'm going to college and um, Title IX had just been passed. I don't know if, how many of you listeners know about Title IX, but that gave women um, an opportunity to go to college and have her college paid for for playing sports. Mm -hmm. And so back then, this was 1982, I got a full scholarship, women's scholarship, which was, I thought was a big deal, but they only paid for my food and room and board. <laughs> they didn't really pay for school or tuition. That's, that's just the way it was. But it's just to show you the involvement and where we have come. You know, my daughter's friends all got full scholarships and they are full ride, like everything's paid for. And now women are getting, you know, paid um, in college to do endorsements, right? So, so we have made so many strides and I don't want this to be a Debbie Downer discussion because <laughs> it's yeah. not, because we have yeah. come a long way. But I think yeah. what, what, the point that we're getting to is that we don't want to go back now, right? right? We not don't want to come, you know, <laughs> there are still things that we're working on, you know, um, compensation maybe outside of the military is not quite where it needs yes. to be. And yeah, I yeah. also um, suffered around that. Um, but, but we, but we're not going back. We're not going back to the days of women um, giving themselves abortions, right? That that's the way it was folks, believe it or not, that is the way it was. And that's yeah. what we're going back to. If we, um, if we allow these things to continue. Yeah. And, you know, the abortion debate is very, um, it's, it's, it's a tough one. It really raises a lot of emotion. And and there are people maybe because of their religion or just their personal views that believe like that from the, the second of, um, of conception, that that's a baby and that it has all the rights of a human. That again is one of those things. I know there's religions that say that, but these are just some cells at that point. And the problem with that is that now, or one of the problems is that now you're saying that that the real human who is actually here now has lost the right to control her body. And we've heard it a million times. We know it's true. If men could get pregnant, abortions <laughs> would be very readily available. They would be paid for by insurance and they'd be on every corner. So don't ever think that it's not an issue of controlling women's bodies because it is. And the other piece that's going with this is this idea of restricting access to birth control, making it harder to get it, restricting access to, um, to, um, I, what is it, Debbie, um, in, in vitro fertilizer? IVF. IVF. I, yes. Okay. Now, now where is it? It's, why would we do that? Why, why would we stop? Like, so it's all these things that are scientific, um, advancements that allow a woman to have more autonomy over her own body and um 
And, and so when people are, and, and when you take away birth control, of course you increase the number of abortions. If you, if it really was just about abortion, then they would be giving more options for birth control so that, so that there are less, but that's not what happens. It's like less right. options for birth control, less options for in vitro, less. It's about taking autonomy away from women because- well our britches got too big or something. And yeah, that is dangerous and not yeah. okay. Not it's, okay. It's, it's healthcare, right? It we, is healthcare. Women do not have access to proper healthcare now because doctors are scared. There, you know, there's some of these states now that have basically said that, you know, the, the um, <laughs> my dog shut up for the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say hi. <laughs> um, that they, um, they just don't, um, they, you know, they have to, they have to fly somewhere to see a doctor because all the doctors right. have left the state, you know, now you're really harming women, right? Whether it's abortion or just some healthcare, otherwise, just because all the doctors are gone from their state. Right. And this is happening. Right. Because, right. because they don't want to be sued. They don't want to lose their license. And this is like, again, this is not where politicians belong. This is not where anyone belongs, but you is a very personal decision. And, and it's a very personal, um, the whole thing, it's your body. We would never do that to men. Um, why do we do it to women? Why, why does anybody think that's okay? Yeah. And, and when you kind of, I don't know, when you look at it that way, and, and I hate for someone to have to have a daughter or a family member who dies because they couldn't get the care they needed for them to understand how dangerous this is and how this is going back. Um, if you are, if your religion um, prohibits abortion, or if you deeply feel it's wrong, then you can decide not to have one. That's your choice over your body, but you right. don't get to impose that on other people. And this idea that it's okay is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. And it is very disempowering to yeah. women and to girls coming up. Yeah. I think, you know, we can probably, you know, move from here into this concept of safety, right? So I don't know if you've heard the statistics now, but it, something like in the, the US, 60,000 women a month are raped, right? 60,000. Mm -hmm. So let, let's just sit with that for a minute and think right. about that. Right. And then, and then all of those women are raising those kids that perhaps they didn't necessarily want, right. Because they, it was, it was a, it was a trauma. Right. And now you're passing that trauma on to the child. Right. And don't get me started on my, my trauma thing, but you know, we do need to talk about um, safety for, for women um, and harassment, right? Like, yeah. You know, I I I grew up in a, in a men's world, in a very male dominated world that I was trying to exist and and passed over in many situations for potential um, job opportunities. And the harassment was real, in probably every environment I ever worked at, um, yeah. there was harassment. But you did not dare say anything ever, ever. Yeah. You just didn't. It is a different world right now. We've come so far, um, and I don't want to see us lose that either. I, I just yeah. don't want to. I don't want to see us lose any of that. Yeah, and that that um, violence against women is almost always perpetrated by men. And again, it is again back to that masculine, that toxic masculinity, that idea that it's okay to um, dominate another human being because we know that rape is not an act of, of sex, it's an act of violence. And it's and there's a lot that goes into it. And if we don't start healing, we have to start healing the men who are doing this. And I, I'm saying men, because again, I don't know what the statistic is, but does anybody know women who rape? Like even when men are raped, it's other men. Yeah. So so it, statistically, this is who it is. And if we don't heal this, this, this yes. is inclination well, from one human being to dominate or, or hurt another is not normal. It's not healthy. And it, and it requires healing. It requires not just being, 
I don't want to say that if someone rapes, they shouldn't go to jail, but jail shouldn't just be a holding place. There, It should be a place where people are rehabilitated and people shouldn't be there unless they are truly a threat to society. Because when, when people go to jail, they become a threat if they weren't already, because now they're thrown into another horrific, traumatic experience that will mess them up for sure. So again, another soapbox, but, but <laughs> hey, yes. we have to, we, we part, watch of, <laughs> part of healing this, this, yes. um, this pain and, and, um, violence against women is to heal the men who are doing it, call them yes. out, yes. you know, make them don't, don't, don't protect them, but call them out. And then let's have some accountability and let's have some, some healing. Let's have yeah. some so that it doesn't get passed on and on and on. Yes. Yes. Onto the generational trauma. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think we might be running low yes. on time. I know Marcy had um, promised a special little something, something for everybody who might be listening. And by the way, um, this conversation um, will be played on our normal podcast on Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, with that being said, um, I think Marcy wants to round this out with a little something special for everybody here. Yeah, so this is our next podcast episode. It drops on Thursday. You can find us at the Warrior Parent Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, all the places you get them. And one of the things that we do, that Debbie and I do with our nonprofit, which is Core Experience, which is a, is what the Warrior Parent Podcast is affiliated with and falls under. We teach somatic uh, healing centering tools to people, families, kids, adults, grandparents, all the people, so that they can return to a place of center and calm when the world is very chaotic. And the world is very chaotic right now. So we're just going to do a quick little meditation. And so you can join me and join us if you're on, if you're listening right now, if you're listening later, what I would encourage you to do is um, find a comfortable position, sit up nice and straight so that your spine feels straight. I like to put my feet flat on the floor because that helps me feel grounded, but you can sit, you can cross your legs if that's more comfortable. And then if it's comfortable for you, you can allow your eyes to close. If you would rather not close them, you can just blur your vision a little bit, allow your eyes to blur or focus on something, find something that you focus on. And then you receive a cleansing breath in, filling your lungs and belly with clean air. And then release that air. Do that three times. As you slow down and breathe intentionally and deeply, you calm your nervous system. You bring yourself to this place where you are more centered and quiet. So now from this space, continue to breathe intentionally. Focus on your breath whenever you are feeling distracted by something else. Come back to the breath. And I encourage you just to open your mind and your heart to that which is for you, whether it's envisioning a world that works for everyone, where women and men and non-binary people are all free to show up as their best, highest, and most authentic selves, where everyone feels seen and heard and nurtured or if it's a specific dream that you're trying to manifest in your life, a new job, a new relationship, a healing of another relationship, a healing of, of, of your body, illness, or some sort of injury. Just allow this, this dream, this belief in something better to permeate your thoughts right now. Believing it thinking of it as if this is the truth in your life right now. This is how we manifest that which we desire by playing at knowing that it's true, by visualizing it, seeing what it feels like to be in this equal country or to be in this new job that we are loving, to think of what we would smell if we were 
eating the food we wanted to eat or baking food in our own kitchen, in our new home that we're trying to manifest, feeling the sand between our toes if we're manifesting that next vacation. So just take this moment to be in that feeling vibration of that which you want to draw into yourself. And as you intentionally breathe from this space, know that you can return to this image and flesh it out more, bring in more emotion, more feeling, and more clarity on what it is you want to bring in. And the more you do this, the more you draw it into yourself. So just take a few more intentional breaths. Solidifying this belief, this view, this dream of yours. And when you're ready, allow your eyes to open and just bring that with you into your day. Revisit it whenever you like. That's the great thing about meditation. It's always right there for you, right here at your center, at your heart. So uh. thank you so much for joining <laughs> us today on this special episode of the Warrior Parent Podcast. Uh, we hope you'll check us out at um at our podcast page find out more about us listen to there's a year plus worth of podcasts we drop one every week there's a year's worth plus out there that you can go and uh and listen to when you're on your walk when you're driving when you're on that vacation that you just visualize that's gonna drop into your life all right thank you everyone thank you for joining us we'll see you next time on the warrior parent podcast Thanks for listening to the Warrior Parent Podcast, which is a production of our nonprofit, Core Experience, who also creates and distributes core tools. You can find us at coreexperience.org. Make sure you join us next week for another informative conversation to help you and your family show up mindfully, purposefully, and joyfully with each other and in your community. Our core tools platform consists of a number of proven tools and techniques that are designed to reduce stress, anxiety, and overwhelm in spite of what's going on in your world. We want to thank Samuel Hale, LLC, for sponsoring this podcast. Technical and marketing support comes from Inspire Your Brand. Our podcast editor is Justin Beaton. Opinions expressed by guests do not necessarily reflect those of the hosts, the producers, or the financial supporters. I'm Debbie DeMano. And I'm Marcy Mitchell. Thanks for listening. If you resonate with the idea of creating a community to help support kids and families, won't you join us by following the podcast and sharing this episode? You can even write a review. It truly does take a village and we appreciate you.